Okay. <laughs> okay, can we move on up? We're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Everyone spaced out. Well, welcome to the 2020 and 2021 University Awards Ceremony. Um, we're here to honor and recognize our extraordinary faculty and staff for all of their accomplishments. And it was this, it was last March in 2020 when we were just about ready to have the uh, 2020 ceremony when the pandemic struck and we canceled it. And so today we have two classes and we're gonna celebrate the accomplishments and the extraordinary faculty and staff for their teaching excellence, their state-of-the-art research, scholarship, and creativity, and also all their generous service and servant leadership. Congratulations to all of those in the class of 2020 and 2021. We're so inspired by all that you do for Miami and so inspired by what you do for our students and how you empower them to be great scholars, citizens, and everything else that they do once they graduate. I've been at a lot of institutions uh, since coming to Miami, and I've just never seen a faculty and staff put so much of their heart and soul into these students and to be so dedicated to the mission, and that's what we're here to celebrate today, all of your accomplishments. And so, without further ado, because we have a lot to get through today, two classes, uh, can I introduce the Provost Osborne to get us started? All right, thank you. Thank you. So, got a lot to get through, a lot of exciting awards. Thank you all for being here. Um, as you know, you know, Miami is a, an amazing institution with a great and well-deserved reputation for the faculty's commitment to the students. And it's, it's not the buildings, it's not the grounds, it's our faculty and staff that make the difference. So I'm really excited to go through these awards today. And so we are going to, um, I'm going to MC, and I'm gonna invite recipients to come forward, and then President Crawford will give you the award, and we can get the, the picture there, and so come up and smile pretty, and then we'll move forward. Our first award is the University Assessment Award. Assessment is a growing priority in higher education, and certainly here at Miami, we're uh, setting goals, we're assessing and measuring our progress, and that's important so that we continue evolving and growing and improving. Um, the University Assessment Council has identified the winners of these awards after reviewing these plans for the past five years. Departments and programs receive professional development funds to further support their assessment work. For 2020, we'll honor the following three departments. Please come forward and, so we can recognize your achievements. For creating a systemic and meaningful assessment process in art education, Stephanie Baer will be accepting the first award. Stephanie. Although they couldn't be here tonight, Kelly Abshire, Becky Baelish, and Joe Carlin will be accepting this award for implementing a practical phased approach to the assessment for microbiology undergraduate programs. Congratulations to our colleagues. Give them a round of applause. <clears throat> and for implementing a course embedded assessment approach in the Master of Arts for Social Work program, Anne Roma is receiving this award because Anne isn't able to be here. Anne's former chair and our associate dean of EHS, Elise Redina, will accept it in her place, at least. All right, we're off to a good start. For 2021, we again honor three departments. Again, please come forward as a group as we announce your names so we can recognize you. For having their thoughtful, full cycle assessment efforts, including course embedded evaluation of students' work and giving important consideration to the dynamics of teaching, learning, and assessment as a result of the pandemic in American studies, we honor Helen Shoemaker, Sandra Garden, Gardner, Garner, and Jose Amador from the Department of Global and Intercultural Studies. Thank you. 
next for adroitly tying together direct and indirect assessment findings to support student learning and success and considering the application of knowledge and skills to students' career goals, we honor Barbara Oswald from the Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Dr. Oswald can't be here tonight to accept her award in person, but we'll ensure she receives it. Let's give her a big round of applause. And finally, for the class of 2021, for engaging in high quality assessment work with clear articulation of writing guidelines for students, a new graduate student handbook, we honor Mohammed Jehan from the Department of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering. Thank you all. We know assessment is time consuming and very difficult. It's also very important. Our next award is the Career Development Award. The Excellence in Career Development Award recognizes faculty who are leaders in the development of Miami University's career community. That leadership goes far beyond writing recommendations and, and helping with resumes. Faculty who integrate career planning into their academic planning are setting their students up for success, and that's everybody's job at Miami. For 2020, the winner is Patrick Lindsay, Assistant Lecturer in the Department of Commerce in the College of Liberal Arts and Applied Science and the Department of Marketing in the Farmer School of Business. As noted by his nominator, Bob Dahlstrom, Professor Lindsay has not only infused career development and career advising into his teaching and academic advising load, but he's cultivated hundreds of employers to provide internships and jobs for Miami students. Congratulations. For 2021, we have two winners. Dr. Oana Gunu Kenworthy, Associate Teaching Professor, and Dr. Dilchoda Berdieva, Assistant Teaching Professor in Global and Intercultural Studies. These professors were nominated by numerous people for their work over multiple years to incorporate career development within global and intercultural studies at the curricular and co-curricular levels. Congratulations. Where are, there we are. Well done to everyone. So the next award, I'm gonna call it our Early Career Faculty Scholar Recognition Award. It's technically called our Junior Faculty Award, but I don't like the junior part in that. So it says junior on the plaque, but your Early Career Scholars. Individuals who receive the Distinguished Early Career and Senior or Later Career Scholar Recognition are nominated by their faculty fellow peers in recognition of their outstanding research and scholarly activities. Four early career faculty and three later career faculty members are being honored today for this award. Please come forward to be recognized as I call your name. First up is Brittany Aronson, Assistant Professor of Educational Leadership. There you go. Brittany is receiving the Early Career Faculty Scholar Award for her robust body of scholarly work that includes 18 peer-reviewed articles in top-tier journals, two non-refereed articles, five articles currently under review. In 2016, one of her articles received critical acclaim at the American Educational Research Association as one of the top 20 most read articles of the year. In addition to these accomplishments, Professor Aronson exemplifies the teacher-scholar model by excelling in the classroom and publishing some of her work with her students. As her department chair noted, what is key here is how all of these efforts fit together, in particular in support of stronger social justice and interdisciplinary teaching and learning across teacher education. Congratulations, Brittany. <laughs> Ryan Gunderson, Assistant Professor of Sociology is deserving of the Early Career Faculty Scholar Award for his productivity 
in the field of environmental sociology and justice. In his short time at Miami, he's published more than 40 peer-reviewed journal articles, as well as a book manuscript with the University of Michigan Press. His department chair commented, Ryan's among the most productive early career faculty members I've encountered anywhere. The quantity of articles he's published boggles the mind of even the most senior colleagues. Congratulations, Ryan. Andrew Pollock, Assistant Professor of Chemical Engineering, is richly deserving of the Early Career Faculty Scholar Award um, for his outstanding research in the field of thermodynamics. While at Miami, he's published 22 of his 30 peer-reviewed papers in the most outstanding journals in his field. In addition to winning the Nation National Science Foundation grants, Dr. Pollock was named an emerging investigator in a special 2018 issue of the Journal of Chemical and Engineering Data. In the same year, he won Miami's Affordable Education Leader Award. It's not surprising that his chair remarked that Andrew seeks excellence in everything he does. Dr. Paula cannot be here tonight in person, but let's give him a round of applause. <clears throat> Our final honoree for the 2020 cohort, unfortunately can also can't be here, uh, goes to Rosemary Pennington, Rosemary Pennington, I'm sorry. Assistant Professor in Media, Journalism, and Film. Dr. Pennington has published two anthologies fo focusing on media in the Middle East, has a forthcoming single-authored book on pop Islam, and has published seven articles in prestigious peer-reviewed journals. These publications has, have positioned her as one of the leading authorities in her field of study. Her colleague, Jim Tobin, described her as one of the most insightful and influential voices in the critically important discussion of how Western journalists and makers of popular entertainment portray Islam and Muslims. Let's give Dr. Pennington a round of applause. We have three recipients for the Early Career Faculty Scholar Award for 2021. Carolyn Hardin, Assistant Professor of Media, Journalism, and Film and Global and Intercultural Studies, has gained international acclaim as an interdisciplinary scholar bringing together economic and critical humanities approaches to understand the pheno phenomena raising from the financial crisis of 2007 to 2009 to neoliberalism to individual retirement investing and prepaid debit cards. Nominator Sandra Gardner noted that Dr. Hardin's unique and important scholarly interventions also serve to make her a professor that's in high demand and, an exemplary, and is exemplary of the teacher-scholar model that's promoted at Miami University. Although she can't be here tonight, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> All these folks must be too busy writing articles. Our next recipient, I know he's here, Dr. Andrew Jones, Assistant Professor of Chemical Paper and Biomedical Engineering, joined Miami University in 2017 and has since, since amassed an outstanding record of research, including a patent, six peer-reviewed journal articles, and over a million dollars in external funding. Noting the dedication of Dr. Jones to his undergraduate research, nominator Keith Hone stated that the outstanding research results produced in his lab have almost exclusively been produced by talented undergraduates. In turn, Andrew provides mentoring and guidance for these students that make a lasting impact on their lives. Congratulations, Andrew. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we have Jessica McCarty, Assistant Professor of Geography, Professor McCarty its impressive research record includes 31 peer-reviewed journal articles, including 16 since joining the Miami faculty in 2017, and receipt of nearly $5 million in external funding. As noted by Dr. Hank Stevens, professor of biology, Professor McCarty's research is highly interdisciplinary, involving not only geospatial scientists, but linking together political science, ecology, atmospheric science, landscape management, economics, and agriculture. Congratulations. Let's give them all a round of applause.
And of course now we have high expectations for each one of these scholars. Next is our distinguished faculty scholar recognition. We begin by honoring our recipients of the 2020 Distinguished Faculty Scholar Award. Our first recipient is Professor Scott Hartley in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Since arriving at Miami in 2007, he, he's published 26 peer-reviewed articles and has given more than 30 presentations at national conferences and universities. Five of his publications have appeared in one of the preeminent journals in the world. Dr. Hartley has also amassed almost $2 million in external grants from NSF and other agencies and garnered the prestigious Air Force Office of Scientific Research Young Investigator Award. One of his nominators put it, Scott's outstanding scholarly record enhances the reputation of Miami University and makes all of his colleagues better scientists as well. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, Terry Messman, professor of psychology, is deserving of the Distinguished Scholar Award for gaining national and international eminence as a leading trauma researcher in clinical psychology. While mentoring the next generation of researchers and clinicians in the field, Dr. Messman has published more than 60 peer-reviewed journal articles and five book chapters. She's received significant external funding, including a multi-site award from the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. One of her colleagues commented, her long and consistent history of conducting and disseminating meaningful research that not only pushes the scientific field forward in important ways, but also betters the lives of some of society's most vulnerable individuals makes her the ideal candidate for this award. Congratulations. I'm starting to feel a little bit of an imposter syndrome with all these high-performing faculty. Last but not least from our class of 2020, we have Dr. Elizabeth Wardle, Professor of English and Director of our Roger and Joyce Howe Center for Writing Excellence. She's being recognized for so many things, writing across the curriculum, composition, writing studies. Dr. Wardle's 2016 book, Naming What We Know, earned the Writing Program Administrator's Outstanding Contribution in the Discipline Award. Since arriving at Miami in 2016, she's published two more co-edited volumes, has two forthcoming books under contract, has produced 14 peer-reviewed journal articles, and 15 book chapters. Her reputation as a nationally and internationally renowned scholar is evidenced by more than 30 invited plenaries and keynotes and 30 conference presentations. Her chair's concise summary of her accomplishments is fitting. The fact that Dr. Wardle continues this prolific scholarly output while maintaining a high-profile administrative role at Miami is simply astounding. Congratulations, Liz, and all of our team here. All right. Turning to our 2021 Distinguished Faculty Scholars, first up is Rose Marie Ward, Professor of Kinesiology, Nutrition, and Health, and Associate Dean of the Graduate School. Professor Ward has dedicated her career to helping young adults leave better lives. Efforts recognized by commendations for teaching excellence, including being named the Miami University Alumni Effective Educator, winning the Knox Teaching Award, and Ohio Magazine's Excellence in Education Award. As noted by Dr. Hongmei Li, Associate Professor of Strategic Communication, Dr. Ward's accomplishment in scholarship is evidenced by her pro prolific interdisciplinary publication and well-deserved recognition in the fields of alcohol, sexual assault, eating disorders, and soci social media research. Congratulations. Next, we honor Ellen Yazerski, Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry and Director of our esteemed Center for Teaching Excellence. Professor Yazerski is a renowned researcher and teacher in chemistry education research, only the second faculty member at Miami to be named a fellow by the American Chemical Society. Dr. Yazerski's outstanding efforts in both research and teaching were summarized by Dr. Stacy lowry Bretz, who noted that she translates her research findings into evidence-based instructional practices to benefit Miami students in the classroom. 
Her research has directly impacted the classroom pedagogy of more than 3,000 high school chemistry teachers across the U.S. and, by direct extension, the learning of their students. Ellen is unable to be here tonight to enjoy your applause, but let's give her a round anyway. <laughs> Our final honoree in the 2021 class is John Jeep, Professor of German, Russian, Asian, and Middle Eastern Languages and Cultures. <laughs> Professor Jeep has a storied list of accomplishments, which include three monographs, an encyclopedia on medieval Germany, 32 peer-reviewed articles, 200 book reviews, as well as invited publications, proceedings, articles, and contributions on foreign language pedagogy. According to his nominator, Dr. Nicole Thies, Dr. Jeep's career has been characterized by an internationally renowned scholarship, valuable contributions to the field through editing and bibli bibliographic work, stellar teaching and pedagogical activities, and generous support of students and colleagues in their scholarly pursuits. Congratulations. A lot of really impressive folks. Thank you and congratulations, everyone. We're now going to turn to the Roger and Joyce Howe Award for Excellence in Disciplinary Writing Instruction. So this first award for, was given in, the award was first given in 2020. Um, the Roger and Joyce Howe Award for Excellence in Disciplinary Writing Instruction, which honors individuals or teams of faculty who have made concerted efforts to innovate in writing instruction in their disciplines. The 2020 Team Award goes to Elaine Miller, Keith Fennin, and Gail Polhouse in the Department of Philosophy. <laughs> this departmental team has worked tirelessly to implement a coherent system for teaching students how to write philosophy, to include, it's tough to get good help, you know? So a coherent system for teaching students how to write philosophy, including a complete revision of their advanced writing course, creation and implementation of a faculty development program for the department, and development of a comprehensive set of resources for, to guide writing instruction. They're now creating a textbook about writing instruction in philosophy. Congratulations, team. The 2021 Team Award goes to Janice Klinghorn, Kinghorn and Ling Xiao in the Department of e Economics. While they couldn't be here tonight, Janice and Ling have worked to integrate meaningful writing instruction across multiple courses in their department. The result is a scaffolded course sequence that fulfills the advanced writing requirements and an ongoing and iterative department-wide assessment of student learning that reflects research-based principles and best practices in writing. By embracing the principle that writing is disciplinary and learned over time, the economics faculty have been able to engage in best practices in both writing instruction and writing assessment that illustrate how their advanced writing sequence supports student learning. By integrating the advanced writing requirements into disciplinary courses taken by all economics majors, they've ensured that both CAS and FSB economics majors receive writing instructions from economics experts. This illustrates best practice in teaching writing in multiple ways. First, their approach does not assume that writing can be learned in one course or even a set of courses taught by non-disciplinary specialists. Second, it assumes that all students benefit from additional instruction in writing and economics. So let's give them a round of applause. The inaugural individual award for 2020 goes to Dr. Joseph Johnson, professor of psychology, who completely redesigned the Psych 293 and 294 course sequence, which is required for all majors to advance a problem-based approach that includes ongoing writing and created a set of scaffolded materials for the sequence. He also constructed a training program for graduate students who teach in the associated lab sections. Finally, he spearheaded the creation of an undergraduate research journal for students in his department to showcase their outstanding written and scholarly work. Congratulations.
Also recognized in 2020 with an individual Howe Writing Award is Dr. Jennifer Kinney, Professor of Gerontology. Nominated by a colleague and five of her graduate students, Dr. Kinney has worked tirelessly with her colleagues to completely transform the graduate curriculum to advance writing. She achieved this through scaffolding her assignments, authoring a disciplinary writing guide, and developing a set of thoughtful resources for her students and colleagues. As one of her graduate students wrote, because of her, I've learned that writing is a process that takes time and care, that writing is thinking, and that what I have to say matters, and that writing can be a truly powerful form of communications. Congratulations, Dr. Kenny. Okay, so on to the individual awards for 2021. Uh, our, our first award is Dr. I'm sorry. We only have one. Okay. Uh, winning the 2021 award is Dr. Mike si Mark Sidebottom. Mark is one of the first two faculty members from engineering to participate in the Howe Faculty Writing Fellows Program. As a result of his participation, he reflected deeply on the threshold concepts of mechanical engineering and how they're reflected in the writing expectations in engineering, which tend not to be taught explicitly. Although Mark is an assistant professor, he returned to MME, MME after fellows and conducted research about what writing is currently being assigned, how it's being taught, and what feedback students are receiving. He then created a detailed guide to the conventions and values of writing in MME and to particular and to commonly assigned genres in that department. This guide is now the department's handbook for all MME courses. Mark's work is above and beyond what should be expected of an assistant professor and is an example for other engineering departments. Congratulations. <laughs> now we turn to the Knox Distinguished Teaching Award, uh, the Distinguished Service and Distinguished Professor Awards, and the Benjamin Harrison Medallion. Uh, first, the Knox Distinguished Teaching Award, the E. Phillips Knox Distinguished Teaching Award, I'm sorry, which reflects the core of our undergraduate teaching mission. It was established by a Miami alumnus, E. Phillips Knox, Miami class of 1968, to recognize creative and engaging teaching methods at the undergraduate level. For 2020, our deserving recipient is Sarah Watt, Associate Professor of Educational Psychology. Dr. Watt innovates in her planning of instruction and assessment by cultivating healthy struggles and expertly re applying relevant theories in her field to instructional decision making. She also applies universal design approaches to promote a learning environment that's inclusive and meets the individual needs of a diverse group of students. Dr. Watt, thank you for igniting minds and rigorous learning in the classroom and helping to make Miami an extraordinary educational experience. Our 2021 recipient is Dr. Megan Gross, Associate Clinical Lecturer in the Department of Speech Pathology and Audiology. Dr. Gross regularly modifies her courses to not only improve student engagement and learning, but to also sync the course with evolving language and culture. She includes current events and key issues in the deaf community and uses these centrally to engage students in course activities. Specifically, her use of social media and bringing deaf events and deaf community members to campus help immerse students in the deaf community to realize meaningful learning outcomes associated with American Sign Language. Dr. Gross, congratulations on all your work and everything you do for deaf culture. The Distinguished Service Award is awarded every two years and is one of the most significant recognitions that Miami has to offer for employees who have made a significant impact on the life and mission of Miami University. For 2020, we'll be offering two exemplary recipients. I'll invite them to come forward and be recognized as I read your citation. Our first recipient is Dr. Mike Kerm, Emeritus Professor of Economics in the Farmer School of Business. As the former Dean of Students, Associate Dean of the Farmer School and a beloved faculty member, Mike is an innovator. He's amassed a remarkable record of spearheading lasting changes at Miami, including initiatives relating to prevention of high-risk alcohol use and sexual and interpersonal violence and the promotion of student health and wellness. While Mike couldn't be here today, we thank him for his astounding contributions to the Miami student experience 
and his tireless commitment to excellence that maintains our distinctive tradition of teaching and student development and success. Congratulations, Mike. <laughs> the second recipient of this highly prestigious award is Sue Cipella, Senior Director of, the Learning, of Learning Assistance at the Miami Regionals. She's being recognized for her innovative leadership in advancing the success of all students and particularly those with special challenges. In addition to securing more than three million in federal and state grant funding, Sue has led challenging and dynamic initiatives such as the Meta Majors Project designed to fuel college success and completion. Sam G. Broyles, who's the executive director of the Booker T. Washington, hold on a second there, Sue, don't go too far. Samuel G. Broyles, who's the executive director of the Booker T. Washington Community Center in Hamilton YMCA, as well as one of Sue's former students, is here to provide some additional comments. Well, I was told I only got one to two minutes. I'll make it sweet. Well, as a student at Miami, um, and I'm going to just speak from the heart because this would be more than one or two minutes. Sue was very impactful for me and all of our other students. She always came with a warm, smiling faces. And as a student on regionals, I was a non-traditional student. And she was someone who was like a motherly figure for those that didn't have it. She uh, always went above and beyond to advocate for students, but not just there, it didn't stop on campus. She went above and beyond in the community. As I became the executive director of the Booker T. Washington Community Center, we served the largest portion of lower income uh, students in our city in Hamilton. And she would be there after a full day of work at Miami helping students, going in and planting seeds into kids that are now K through sixth grade, making sure they had the adequate help for their homework to achieve academic success. Um, that goes beyond just recognition within just the classroom, but just the outstanding person and citizen that she is. And uh, she's one of the most courageous fighters that I know. Uh, many challenges her way, and she always overcame and helped motivate former students like me to continue to want to achieve and strive as a f uh, f also fellow Miami grad and former student. So thank you, Sue, for everything that you have done. It is so well-deserved, and it's such an honor to be here to honor you. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, would you like to say anything before you head back to your seat? <laughs> it's okay if you don't want to. Okay. Sue, thank you for providing all these incredible benefits. You make us proud. Our Distinguished Professor Award um, is next. In 2021, we honor two of our faculty with the title of Distinguished Professor. The title of University Distinguished Professor is conferred upon those faculty members whose achievements unequivocally merit the recognition. The selection process involves a rigorous appraisal, including requests of nationally and internationally known scholars in the appropriate discipline outside Miami University to place the nominee among other distinguished scholars of national and international reputation. We'll be recognizing two individuals for this award. Before I get to that, I just want to telegraph that we're going to have someone who nominated come up and say something, and then the nominee can also say a few words as well. So our first nominee for the, or our first recipient is Dr. Tammy Kernodal. Tammy, could you come up here? <laughs> Tammy is a professor of music and a nationally recognized scholar specializing in the importance of black music to American culture. She, is an she has an eloquently stated focus on the reclamation of black women musicians, composers, and impresarios from the margins of history. Her national stature is exemplified by her service as a consultant for an exhibit on black music at the National Museum of African American History and Culture 
and as, an, a member, as a member of advisory boards for two PBS series, one NPR series, and for a compilation of the Smithsonian Institute anthology of hip hop and rap. She has an extensive record of juried performances, articles in prestigious journals, and has authored monographs and books that have received national acclaim. She is clearly at the top of her discipline. Even more, she's achieved national recognition outside of her discipline, which according to our chair of the music department is something only four members in the history of the department have accomplished. Consistent with the selection criteria for this award, Professor Kernodal is a teacher of demonstrated excellence and a contributor to the life and mission of Miami University, as illustrated by receiving one of the university's highest honors, the Benjamin Harrison Medallion in 2018, along with the Nellie Craig Women's Studies Research Scholar Award in 2009 and the university's Effective Educator Award. Stories of, are told of the way shy and unassuming prospective students and their families rise up singing when she's leading sessions at Make It Miami events. Uh, I'd like to invite Chris Tanner, our chair of the music department, to provide some additional remarks, and then Dr. Canole, you can have your say. Uh, thank you, uh, Provost Osborne. You know, uh, folks, this is the second time in as many days I've been in a room with uh, our distinguished provost, which either means I must be somewhat important or in some sort of trouble. Uh, actually, you know, I was honored to have uh, Provost Osborne and um, Dana Cox with me yesterday at a departmental event celebrating one of my colleagues, and I'm honored again that he's with us, uh, and Dana, and also President Crawford, and all you fine guests are here. Um, I have the pleasure of serving as chair of the Department of Music, and whenever I tell other academics that I'm a department chair, the reaction invariably is, I'm sorry, or ooh, how's that going? <laughs> I never get, you lucky devil. But this is because they don't realize that as a chair I have the opportunity and indeed the privilege of presiding over events such as this one where I'm pleased to introduce you all to my esteemed colleague and friend, Dr. Kernodal. Some of you might know Tammy already. She is an eminent scholar, as uh, Jason was just saying, in the field of musicology. And her deep expertise in popular music and culture, specifically that which emanates from the African diaspora, has made her a household name in academic circles. Among other things, uh, she served as the president of the so uh, Society for American Music, a consultant to the Smithsonian Institute, and as a featured on-screen commentator, in the 2019 documentary film, Miles Davis, Birth of the Cool, part of the American Masters series on PBS. These are things that everyone who cares to know or who needs to know or should know, knows. But I would like to share with you today some things about Tammy that few people know. When Tammy first entered college at Virginia State University, she had aspirations of being a concert pianist. Well, in my conversations with Tammy, I know that that plan didn't quite work out. But her passion for playing music never diminished. And so she didn't allow her piano skills to wither. On the contrary, even today, she utilizes that instrument, not to mention her beautiful singing voice, as a way to communicate with people. And she does so quite effectively, as anyone has heard her perform can attest. Speaking of communication, I've heard Tammy speak quietly in a small group, such as a committee or a faculty meeting. And I've watched her hold forth in an auditorium full of people. In both cases, she can be terribly persuasive. A powerful communicator not only possesses the rhetorical skill of the orator, but also a deep sense of conviction based on hard-earned experience, a wide and diverse body of knowledge, and a careful thought process. The fact is, when Tammy Kernodal speaks, be it through her writings, her lectures, her leadership roles, or her musical performances, people listen. This manifests in a phenomenon that, again, few people in this room know. For that matter, I'm doubtful whether her colleagues who hold her in such high regard across the country know this as well, namely, that a high number of students who take a course with her end up coming back for more. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard or read in student evaluations from Tammy's students that go something like this. 
I absolutely love Dr. Kernodal. And so when this course was finished, I just looked in the catalog to see what else she taught. Because I realized I just need to be in the room again with that person as much as possible. Friends, this is the kind of information that doesn't make it into a CV or a bio. Tammy's humility will not allow herself to toot her own horn, so I'll do it for her. She is a magnet for students because they not only see in her an accomplished, high-achieving expert, but also a human being who cares deeply that they learn and that they strive to maximize their own full potential. I dare say that although Tammy's achievements in the discipline and among her peers are worthy of high praise, it is this impact that she has in the classroom at this university with our students that will be her greatest legacy. Thank you again for this opportunity to introduce to you Dr. Tammy Kernodal, one of two Miami University distinguished professors in the class of 2021. I will be brief. Now you know the secret, I'm very short. I just want to first start my remarks by saying that I must give thanks to the divine because my failure as a concert pianist could have resulted in me deciding to take a different course in my life. But that failure was just the doorway that I needed to be standing here before you today. I have been blessed beyond measure and my life is a testimony that sometimes there is a higher plan and a deeper goal than whatever you can dream. As a young girl growing up in Southern Virginia amongst the tobacco plants and red dirt, I dreamed a dream that was etched out in books. And every day I ran home to my record player to listen to notes, to nuances, to music that moved the soul, even beyond what I was able to comprehend at my young age. And so I'm grateful, deeply grateful, deeply grateful to my colleagues, to Dean Mullinex, who continues to find ways to inspire me and give me hope, to my chair, Dr. Christopher Tandy, who continues to support me no matter how much, sometimes I probably get on his nerves. <laughs> to my colleagues here in Miami, to President Crawford and Provost Osborne, I have spent majority of my adult life here. Last week, I had the pleasure of turning 52 years old. I came here when I was only 27 years old. And so I've known this space, I've grown in this space. And I thank you for acknowledging me and the work that I've done to my extended family, to my family that is watching in Virginia right now on live stream, I love you. And to Delika Blackwell, who has been such a great companion and friend and uh, enabled me to find meaning in life sometimes in my work, I thank you all. Professor Kernodal, I, uh, I, I think we're all lucky you're here. Thank you. Our next recipient of the Distinguished Professor Award is David Berg, Professor of Biological Sciences and Biology. David, can you join us, please? There he is. Dr. Berg is an exceptionally productive teacher scholar who has a nationally recognized, uh, who is a nationally recognized expert in biodiversity and conservation biology. The committee took particular note of the fact that his impressive portfolio of research and research translation were built while he also maintained the very high teaching loads of the regional campuses. 
He's written almost 60 peer-reviewed publications and has generously collaborated with students and colleagues. He's received more than $4 million in external funding and has expertise in the translation of research into practice. He's a former recipient of Miami's Distinguished Scholar Award, as well as recognitions for scholarship from the College of Arts and Sciences, the Hamilton Campus, and the Ohio Council for Higher Education. Consistent with the selection criteria for this award, Professor Berg is a teacher of demonstrated excellence and a contributor to the life and mission of Miami University, as illustrated by an ongoing NSF-funded research experiences for undergraduates site grant focused on ecology and human-dominated landscapes that provides experiential learning opportunities for students from across the country. He's served the university, his division, and department in numerous ways and has demonstrated commitment and action that provides opportunities for student success for all, regardless of their background or previous academic experience. Bob Davis, Associate Dean for the College of Liberal Arts and Applied Sciences, is here to provide some additional remarks, and then you can have your say. Good afternoon. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce Dr. Dave Berg as a newly minted Distinguished University Professor. Uh, Dave has been at Miami for roughly 30 years. We came in at about the same time, and he has an unsurpassed record of teaching research and service in his Miami career. While teaching biology courses on the regional campuses, he's worked hard to give regional campus students the same research opportunities as those enjoyed by their Oxford counterparts. That he has succeeded in this is beyond dispute. In fact, uh, recently a regional campus student who had her first research experiences working with Dave and ultimately went on to earn a doctorate was honored with the regional's uh, alumni master's award and came back to the campus to give a presentation that we hope inspired the next generation of students. He's also been heavily involved helping international and underrepresented students to have meaningful research experiences through uh, the NSF REU program uh, in which he's been a PI, a co-PI, and every other kind of I that, that there is. Um, I attend these presentations at the end of each summer and, and I can tell you it's inspiring to see what the students have gained through the opportunity to learn about, about research. Uh, Dave's become an internationally recognized scholar in the area of evolution and conservation of biodiversity. He focuses particularly on freshwater invertebrates. As Dave is my personal friend, I can't tell you how uncomfortable I felt that time I ate a big bowl of mussels while in Belgium, but sadly there was just too much peer pressure for me to overcome. Uh, despite this shameful incident, Dave still speaks to me, and I'm grateful for his mercy and, and his understanding. It's the national dish. What was I going to do? Uh, more relevant to today's topic, Dave has published more than 60 peer-reviewed papers delivered about two dozen invited seminars, and secured more than $4 million in extramural grants. He has a particularly strong relationship with the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. I think they have a Dave Berg division at this point. Uh, so in the summer, he's often down in the Chihuahua Desert sampling mussels, although in a completely different way than I sampled them in Belgium. Uh, more than 25% of his publications involve undergraduates as co-authors. And of the more than 150 presentations that the Berg Lab has contributed to conferences over the years, about 60% have included undergraduates as authors. So his commitment to involving undergraduates in research, I just can't imagine there's someone with a stronger record out there. Uh, now, I've played basketball with multiple people in this room, including these two gentlemen. And what they will verify about me is that if I have the ball and I can see the rim, it's going up. Um, what Dave does when he's on your team is he helps on D and he passes the ball and he sets picks and he's a total team player. And the best thing about him is that he wants the same level of success for everyone that he's achieved for himself. I can't tell you the number of times he's helped his, his colleagues and his students with advice, uh, always good advice, not what they get when they come to me. Uh, so they're the constant beneficiaries of his generosity. So I'm just thrilled to see him recognized in this way, and uh, congratulations, Dave, and we'll eat some non-muscles together sometime when all this is done.
Well, I want to start by thanking Tammy for setting the bar incredibly high for these responses. Uh, I, I just, to be recognized by one's colleagues is, is really special. And um, I've been part of two really good groups of people at the university. One is my colleagues in the sciences on the Hamilton campus, and um, the other has been my colleagues in the Department of Biology. And um, all of this is a result of their collegiality, um, their willingness to share ideas, to criticize when necessary. And then finally, I've had outstanding students, both graduate students and undergraduate students. I can't imagine Oh, I didn't imagine when I took my job at Miami how enriching it would be to work with students, especially one-on-one -on -one in the research lab, and that's been uh, probably the highlight of, of my career. So thank you. Well, congratulations again, Dave, and thank you for doing what you do. We now turn to the Benjamin Harrison Medallion, our final award. This is the most significant recognition Miami offers to faculty for living out the qualities of teaching, research, and service. One side of the medall medallion is a likeness of Benjamin Harrison, the 1852 Miami graduate who became the 23rd president of the United States, serving from 1889 to 1893. The other side reads, for outstanding contributions to the education of the nation. Nominees for this award must meet the following criteria and strive to fulfill the noblest aims of every faculty member. First, attaining national or international stature in an academic discipline or an administrative area, serving Miami in a variety of ways, and recogni recognition of influence beyond his or her primary discipline. We will be recognizing two outstanding individuals this year for the award. Would you... I didn't edit that right. The first recipient of the 2020 Benjamin Harrison Medallion is Dr. Stacy Lowry Bretz, University Distinguished Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry. As one of her nominee, nominators wrote, she's a pioneer in the field of chemistry education research. By blending together research from cognitive science, discipline-based education research, science education and chemistry, she's produced a truly world-class research program. Her teaching has been recognized both internally and externally, including the E. Philip Knox Award for Excellence in Teaching and the 2020 American Chemical Society Award for Achievement in Research for the Teaching and Learning for, of Chemistry. Dr. Bretz has undertaken significant service responsibilities, including chairing the Fiscal Priorities Committee of the University Senate, no small feat, and more recently an academic program prioritization and evaluation project, again, no small feat. Molly Atkinson, one of Dr. Brett's postdoctoral students, is now an assistant professor at the University of North Texas and has recorded some remarks in her honor. Do we have those? Oh, there we go. It is my absolute honor to introduce Dr. Stacy Lowry Bretz, University Distinguished Professor of Chemistry in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. She is the current chair of the American Chemical Society Division of Chemical Education and received the American Chemical Society Award for Achievement in Research on the Teaching and Learning of Chemistry for 2020. She was also recently selected as an Emerging University Leader for the 2021-2022 class of the American Council on Education Fellows Program, the longest running leadership development program in the United States. I had the pleasure to work with Dr. Bretz as a postdoctoral researcher in her research group at Miami. She taught me many things about research and teaching and also about life. Stacy, thank you for being a great researcher, teacher, mentor, and friend. I cannot think of someone more deserving than Dr. Bretz for the Benjamin Harrison Medallion Award as she has made significant and sustained contributions to chemistry education research teaching of chemistry, and service in her career at Miami University. Well, that was quite the surprise. I'll have to remember to thank her for some of those photos. <laughs> 
I want to thank each of you for coming this afternoon. No one gets to this point in their career without an extensive network of support and encouragement and collaborators, so I wanted to make sure that I offered a few words of gratitude to my students, my colleagues, and to my family. First, I'd like to thank my parents, Jim and Ruth, who are watching this afternoon via live stream. My dad never had the chance to attend college, and mom had to drop out when he lost his job. But they worked for more than three decades on an assembly line and cleaning other people's houses to make sure my brother and sister and I got a college education. Thanks, mom and dad. I love you. Now I'll pull myself together. Okay. <laughs> um, I also want to thank Chris Makaroff, who's hiding in the back of the room. Most of you now know him as Dean, but I first met him when he was chair of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. And he took a chance on hiring me. Hiring a tenured full professor in my specialty of chemistry education research was not a popular choice at the time, and not all the faculty in my department supported it. But Chris had a vision, and he made sure that chemistry was part of the cluster hire that happened that year in STEM education research across the College of Arts and Science and the College of Education, Health, and Society. And I wasn't enough. He doubled down on that vision by hiring Ellen Yazerski, who was honored earlier today as well. Um, so for many years, our program in chemistry education research was the top one in the United States. And I want to thank Ellen for all she's taught me about how to do my research and hold it to a higher quality standard. The Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry is very fortunate to have Ellen, um, as well as we all are through her leadership at the Center of Teaching Excellence at Miami. Um, she inspires all of us to do better on behalf of our students, and I am surely a better teacher because I know Ellen. Um, of course, none of what I've been able to do and privileged to do would be possible without the incredible students that I've had, like Molly, who uh, introduced me. I've been very fortunate to work with um, scores and scores of undergraduates, graduate students, and postdoctoral researchers. Teaching people to learn how to learn is the joy that makes my heart sing, and we haven't had enough of that in the last 18 months. There is nothing like that moment when a student comes to you with data and says, always very timidly, Dr. Bretz, that analysis you told me to do didn't quite work. And they're, they're sure it's them. And they say, what, what should we do now? I, I'm ready. What should I do? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out. You're going to have to help me figure it out. And they look at you stunned that moment, like because they hold this idea that the professor always knows what to do next. And it's in that incredible moment where they realize that they get to create knowledge, not just uh, receive it. It's a privilege that we get to do that. Um, there are too many to name beyond Molly. They're all professors and high school chemistry teachers now, and I'm incredibly proud of every one of them. Um, as I said earlier, chemistry education research is a really small discipline, and as I was figuring out how to earn tenure, in a department where hypothesis-driven research is the standard, and I was going to use methods from colleagues in anthropology and sociology and psychology, that presented more than a few challenges. So I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my cohort of collaborators across the country who helped figure out how do we get chemists to value this research, and I just want to call out my friends Tom, Marcy, Melanie, Don, and Norb for all they've given to me. I need to thank Eric Falgren, who's vice president at W.W. W. Norton, the publishers. Eric had a vision for how the results of my group's research might reach beyond Miami to improve other students' learning. He was my editor for two editions of now three different textbooks for general chemistry and AP chemistry. And I've learned a great deal from Eric and the team at Norton, and they've made me a much better writer. Um, I also want to thank David Kramer, David Ellis, and Lindsay Carpenter. The Benjamin Harrison Medallion as Provost Osborne said, is not just about being a good teacher or being a good scholar. Um, there's also recognition of meaningful service in there. And David, David, and Lindsay have taught me more than I can properly thank them for. I'm exceptionally grateful for their dedication and stewards of Miami's resources and their patience in teaching me again and again just the small fraction of what they know. Miami is very fortunate to have them as colleagues. Uh, lastly, I want to thank my children, Susanna, Joe, and Michaela, and my husband, Rich, who's here with me today. Um, some of you may know this, but I first met Rich when I was 13 and he was 15. We're high school sweethearts, and uh, 
according to the birthday I just had the other day, that means we've, he's chosen to stick with me for more than 40 years now. So um, being my children or my husband has not always been easy. We have picked up and moved our family four times so that I could advance my career. And each time, Rich has been the trailing spouse. So I want to acknowledge here publicly all that Rich has contributed so that I might be here today. Thank you, Rich. You and the kids have been my biggest, loudest, and most enthusiastic supporters, and I'm eternally grateful for your love and encouragement. And with that, I want to thank President Crawford, Provost Osborne, and the members of our um, community who serve on the University Awards Committee for giving their time to solicit nominations, read them, and deliberate in awarding the awards. It's very humbling to be recognized by this, um, by your colleagues. So thank you for coming today. This year's second recipient is Dr. Tim Melly, Professor of English and Director of our Humanities Center. As a recipient of the Knox Distinguished Teaching Award, College of Arts and Science Distinguished Educator Award, and the Celebration of Teaching Award by the Cincinnati Consortium of Colleges and Universities, Dr. Melly is widely recognized as one of Miami's premier teachers. A key reason for his success is his insatiable intellectual energy borne out in his scholarly record that includes two highly regarded book manuscripts, two dozen peer-reviewed articles, and numerous invited lectures. Perhaps Tim's greatest accomplishment is his leadership as director of the Humanities Center, where he has developed 15 distinct programs for faculty and students supporting innovative research and learning in the communities. Madeline Detloff, chair of the Department of English, is here to make a few comments about Dr. Melly. Madeline, would you join us at the podium? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so when I agreed to say a few words about Tim Malley in March of 2020 um, for the, this award ceremony, I knew I'd have my work cut out for me to summarize all of his truly distinguished accomplishments in just one or two minutes, which was the brief I was given. Then when Dana asked me to say a few words today, because, you know, March 2020, uh, the season of why we can't have nice things. Um, I thought, no way. You know, not only do I have to mention the two monographs, 22 articles, 17 in international invited lectures, 14 interviews for the press, and eight short stories, on top of directing the Humanities Center, securing a half million dollar NEH grant. That's in the humanities, half million dollar is a lot of money. Uh, working with advancement to raise an additional 1.5 million running the Altman Seminar Series, the Joffrey and Fellows Program, and several other important public-facing events for the university, winning the Knox Teaching Award, the CAS Distinguished Educator Award, the Celebration of Teaching Award, and supervising dozens, literally dozens, of graduate students. Um, all of these things that I would uh, have told you about in March of 2020 um, to um, tell you how awesome Tim is. But since then, he's done even more. Now, while we were all perfecting <laughs> our sourdough starters in 2020, <laughs> um, Tim was busy. This is his 2020 annual activities report. It's 10 pages single space without a, a tiny bit of fluff in it. Um, so here are just a few highlights because I only have one to two minutes. Um, he's done four more international lectures. Um, he's got another book manuscript with at least 80K uh, words in it, probably more by now, because um, we've had a, a couple months of 2021. Um, he's done two Altman programs, Time and Temporality and Migrations, six junior faculty seminars. This is, the, again, 
you know, sourdough year for the rest of us. Um, uh, writing, uh, writing for public workshop, 18 uh, people were in his research apprenticeship program, research collaborative, a digital fellowships program, and yeah, there's one book manuscript on threat matrix, the culture of politics of security in the age of terror. Oh, uh, also a book of short stories that he's uh, finished, and then another manuscript that he's working on called Exposed, Democracy, Suspicion, and the Melodrama of Revelation. Um, it, that's quite a sourdough starter, if you were to ask me. Um, this is all on top of really amazing leadership during this very difficult year and a half. Um, when things shut down in March of 2020, um, or went remote in March of 2020, he quickly pivoted the United Youth Center to do um, many, many remote um, events, the laptop lectures you may uh, know about. That was just sort of made up <laughs> on the fly, and they were um, really excellent. Um, he has continued to be, you know, a voice for um, change and working um, with the kind of integrity um, that we expect of him at Miami University. Um, he developed the Miami Focus program with uh, colleagues. This year it's on race and racial justice. It also incorporates um, what was the first year reading program. Um, I should tell you that he's also, um, through all the years I've known him, um, been a really solid coach for his son's basketball and baseball teams. I think I think his son's probably can throw the 90 by now. <laughs> so, um, so I've got to also see him um, work with young people at, in, in different contexts. Um, and what's more, you know, he's, he's a really consummate colleague. When he shows up, he shows up fully um, to meetings for his colleague for his students and for his university. I don't know if you noticed this, but he showed up about 15 minutes late to this um, ceremony because he was teaching and he um, ran over here after teaching his class. Um, we're really fortunate to have somebody who has this kind of energy. Just one question for you, Tim. <laughs> Do you ever sleep? Um, uh, he's really, I, I want to know what kind of energy drink that you uh, use, and um, congratulations to you. You really deserve this bling, and I'm proud to be your colleague. Wow, this is, uh, this, this ceremony is really triggering my imposter syndrome. <laughs> in a big way. Um, I just want to, I'll be very brief, I just want to say I'm really humbled to get this award um, for a number of reasons. One, just, just listening to um, the description of, of every single person that's received an award is daunting. Um, second, because it turns out these awards take effort. Uh, people have to write long letters and they have to twist other people's arms to write long letters. Um, so to those of you who conspired to do that work in a very busy time, I'm incredibly uh, grateful. Uh, and, and third, just because I really think there are so many people in a university like this that are completely dedicated to what they do, that, um, that do their work out of love and also deserve to be uh, recognized. I, I actually uh, received a call from President Crawford when I was in Amherst with my father who gave 40 years of his life to, to the University of Massachusetts. So I just, I do wanna acknowledge his, um, the effect that his example had on me and I also just wanna acknowledge that there are many, there are so many people at this university that deserve recognition. So I'm, I'm very grateful, thank you.
You think you're being triggered. Whew, all right. So we, those were the 2020 Benjamin Harrison Medallion recipients. We also have two recipients for 2021. The first of these recipients is Thomas Christ, professor and chair of biology. Dr. Christ has a long record of outstanding research, teaching, and service to Miami University. His research on biodiversity has resulted in over 100 peer-reviewed scholarly papers, many of which have been published in the most elite journals in the field and have been cited collectively over 15,000 times. Dr. Chris consistently receives outstanding teaching evaluations, has mentored numerous masters and doctoral students, and has conducted cutting edge research with over 40 undergraduate students. He serves our community in valuable ways, including serving as director of the Institute for Environmental, Environment and Sustainability, chair of Miami's Environmental Council, and chair of the University Sustainability Committee. He currently serves on the rapid response team of the Ecological Society of America, which provides science-based input on national policy institutes related to the environment. One of his colleagues in biology, Mike Vanny, is here to make a few remarks about Dr. Christ. Michael. Hi, thanks. I'll be pretty brief, but <clears throat> it's a pleasure to introduce Tom and to say great things about him. I first met Tom when he interviewed here and I was on the search committee. Um, so we've known each other a long time. Uh, at first, Tom was my colleague and my collaborator and my friend and now he's my chair. So I've known Tom in, in various capacities. Um, <clears throat> I gotta give you some numbers being a scientist. Tom's taught nine different courses that I know of from the 200 level to 600 level. Um, he's well known and well respected among our students for teaching quantitative literacy and ecology, quantitative concepts that are very difficult for most students to um, absorb. Um, and it, it's great when they take his classes before mine because then they, they have this, this great background. Um, on a personal level, we overlap a little bit in some of the classes we teach and I've relied on Tom for some of his material and that's, that's been uh, great for me. Um, as Provost Osborne mentioned, he's trained many students in both biology and for when we were zoology and also an IES. Um, Provost Osborne mentioned the papers and the citations and also Tom has an index, H index of 54, if, if that uh, floats your boat. Um, and um, of course the Harris Medallion honors people for their service, so I have to mention that um, and, and from a, a personal point of view. So Tom's been chair of biology for six or seven years now, is that right? And um, the whole time, you know, it's, it's been a crazy time. Um, we merged botany and zoology into one department. Tom had the pleasure of steering us through those couple first years. Then we had a building renovation that took four years to complete and Tom was constantly shuffling people in different offices to different labs, um, de dealing with, with all kinds of things during the renovation. And then just as that was finishing, the pandemic hit. So the whole the period of time, Tom's been chair and he's um, <clears throat> kept the most level head you could imagine and steered us through that like a rock. So thanks, Tom. <clears throat> and again, personally, um, Tom's been super supportive of my own research and teaching programs. So I'm, I'm truly uh, uh, grateful for that. Um, I reached out to a couple of, uh, or several of Tom's former students and, <clears throat> and postdocs <clears throat> to give some comments and all of them without fail, mentioned his great mentorship abilities, the quality of the mentoring, the time he spends, the opportunities he gave them. And I just wanna end <clears throat> with a quote from one of Tom's former students. We'll see if you can guess who this is. Here's the quote, I am better for my career because Tom skillfully taught me to take intellectual risks, learn from failure, and continuously improve my approach to understanding ecology. That skill set is something I continue to draw on as a teacher, administrator, and ecological practitioner. To me, that's the secret sauce, building resilience in students so that they learn how to achieve ambitious goals. <clears throat> I don't think I could have said it any better, so thanks, Tom, for all you, you've done. Thanks very much, Mike. I really appreciate uh, your support and the support of my colleagues in biology who wrote letters to uh, nominate and support me. And then a number of other people outside of uh, Miami who did that, um, they themselves are uh, incredible scholars. Um, 
I've really had a tremendous opportunity during my career to work um, with a lot of collaborators outside of, uh, away from Miami in North America and in Europe, and that has really brought diverse perspectives to what I've been able to communicate to my colleagues and to my students. Um, I've really uh, had incredible experiences and been inspired and challenged by students in the classroom and uh, in, in my research in the field and in the lab. And um, I'm really grateful, and they, they have really brought a lot to what I do at Miami. And um, <coughs> I'm also uh, really grateful to, uh, during my time as uh, in my administrative roles, to the staff, uh, both of biology and IUS, who've really supported a lot of what I do and managed a lot of really complex things that Mike mentioned. Um, and I'm also really grateful to my family, Candace is here, uh, my wife, to uh, help celebrate and share in this award. Thank you very much. The second 2021 recipient of the Benjamin Harrison Medallion is Dr. James Kuiper, Professor of Computer Science and Software Engineering. Dr. Kuiper has served Miami with distinction for over 30 years. He is considered a leading expert in areas of software engineering, software risk assessment and mitigation, and software design rationale. His collaborations with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory led to his being first in the department to receive research funding from NASA. Dr. Kuiper has served on the steering committee for the NSF Ohio Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation LSAMP program. The LSAMP program aims to increase STEM baccalaureate and graduate degrees awarded to underrepresented populations. The LSAMP program at Miami has resulted in many success stories. A nominator said, including increases in underrepresented minority STEM enrollment, retention, and graduation. Dr. Kuiper is as comfortable teaching introductory classes as he is graduate level seminars and propelled Miami students into both academic and industry success. His students consistently praise him as an inspiring teacher who works tirelessly to ensure student success. He served Miami just as well as he served his students. One of his nominators called him a shining example of collaborative leadership and service. Serving on University Senate, co-leading the Miami 2020 Strategic Plan Task Force, serving uh, the Fiscal Priorities and Budget Planning Committee, Dr. Kuiper's commitment to shared governance and service leadership has had a big impact on our institutions. One of his colleagues in computer science and software engineering, Eric Bachman, is here to make a few comments about Dr. Kuiper. Eric, would you join me for a few words? If only I could have uh, programmed this talk and got it all ready to go and then just run it when I got up here. Um, it is an honor to say a few words about Dr. James Kuiper. Despite what I tell him every day in the office, he is certainly deserving of one of the highest awards that Miami has to give. He's been here over three decades at Miami and his accomplishments over that time are way too many to talk about in one to two minutes. He came to Miami in 1986 as an assistant professor, was promoted to associate professor in 1992. In 1998, he became a full professor. He then served for 10 years as the chair of the Department of Computer Science and Software Engineering. During that time, the number of majors grew from 225 to over 900. The number of full-time faculty also grew from 12 to 30. Jim made all this growth and change look easy. After stepping into his shoes, I can tell you it was not easy, but he did an amazing job with these challenges. He is passionate about student learning. He has taught over 30 different courses from the 100 to 600 level. Next spring, he's going to go ahead and teach a new course on quantum computing for his students. So he is in no way falling behind He's recognized as a leader in educational research. We've already, already talked about the important advances in risk analysis and optimization to critical software systems that Jim has helped. 
He was first to secure NSF and NASA funding uh, in what we now call the College of Engineering and Computing. So he was very groundbreaking in that, and we've already heard about the LSAMP program that he was the principal investigator. Jim embodies the Department of Computer Science and Software Engineering, the successful and perhaps most importantly collegial department that we see today as a result of his leadership and mentoring. He has been and remains an amazing colleague, and I can tell you from a personal standpoint because of the possible positive influence he has had on me and my career and many others. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Eric. There are a few times in your life I think you all can uh, acknowledge this when you feel overwhelmed, getting married, birth of kids, getting that PhD overwhelmed. I've had three of those occasions this past year. Uh, one was when <coughs> Eric Bachman and my colleagues uh, in College of Engineering, uh, Amachukla and uh, Chiho Zhou, told me they were nominating me for this. Second was when you called me, was that February or saying that I would have been awarded that and then again today. So overwhelmed and uh, grateful and Tammy blessed. Almost 50 years ago, I started this journey to be a teacher scholar. I'm in my 36th year at Miami and my 44th in the professorate, and I have many people to thank for, my, for, uh, for the support to get here. You don't get here alone. Um, I'd like to thank my wife, Beth, 44 years of marriage to her, and my children, of whom I'm proud. They're, they're all, in a way, in the university. My daughter, Morgan, is a recently tenured professor at Mercer University. Uh, my daughter, Carmen, is a, a medical doctor at the Wake Forest University Children's Hospital. And my youngest daughter, Kirsten, um, is homeschooling her for, so sh she has her own university there at home. So they're all in the university. Um, there are some others I'd like to thank. Some people that you may remember, some of you. Um, David Haddad, some may know him. He was the chair that hired me and uh, was Dean when I was tenured. Um, my colleagues in systems analysis, which is what the department was called, and now it's computer science. Um, the nominators who showed confidence in me, thank you, Eric and Ahmet and Shiho. My research collaborators at, at the Jet Propulsion Lab and other universities like Florida International, Georgia Southern, VCU, and my colleagues in the LSAMP program um, Dean Makaroff, um, Steve Wright, and you should know that, that Scott Hartley has, in addition to all the other things he's done, has been involved in that program. And there are others like him that are great researchers and dedicated to student learning and diversity. And thank you, Scott. Um, in the time I've been here, I, I've seen lots of changes. So let me just take a minute to reflect on those. 36 years, I, you know, I, I still think of the rec center as a new building. <laughs> um, as I said, the school, uh, our, our department changed from systems analysis to computer science to software engineering. The college changed from the School of Applied Science to the uh, College of Engineering and Computing. Uh, by the way, that's a, a, a leadership thing I lost because I wanted it to be the College of Computing and Engineering, and I know Eric supported me in that, but we lost that battle. Um, in, in, uh, when I came in, just to show you how the college has changed, and when I came in 86, I believe we had one full professor, who was a great guy, Bill Davis, great teacher. Um, he became full professor because of his one big publication, which was a great textbook in systems analysis. That was what research was back then. Um, 
more recently now, we've changed dramatically. We've had uh, faculty who uh, have uh, NSF career grants and many that are building international reputations. Things have changed dramatically in my time here. And I think now, I, I just want to take a minute since I am nearing retirement, you should know, um, take a time to uh, reflect a little bit on the current state of the university. I think we're at another inflection point. I know, you know we're wrestling with increasing competition, limited state support, the influence of sel selectivity on our rankings, the increasing discount rate and parents' expectations about financial aid, the desire to increase our diversity at a beautiful but rural campus, a push for more research while maintaining excellence in teaching. These are, are tough decisions. I have been privileged to work with many of our university leaders, including Dr. Crawford, Provost Osborne, Dr. Kramer, uh, our new Dean Sukumaran, Dean Makaroff, and I have confidence in their ability to lead us through these complex and entangled paths and decisions. Even though I may not be around to see, I'll still be here in town watching you. <laughs> um, my one piece of advice is to, to use the collective wisdom of the faculty to an even greater extent in this journey. Um, in particular, I want to take just a moment to advocate for a faculty senate to help capture this wisdom of the faculty that I think is there. So let me close just by saying thank you for the honor. Uh, and it's been my goal to follow the call of the ancient prophet Maka, uh, Micah who said to act, to, he advised us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Well, there's not much more that we can say that hasn't already been said. I am deeply grateful to each one of you for making Miami the place it is. Thank you for all you do, and enjoy the rest of the evening.